Welcome everyone, this is Ken Minot, the president of the Maine Vintage Race Car Association, and back with another edition of the Vintage Racers Roundtable, a production of LCTV and MVRCA. On behalf of our sponsors, Elevation Station and Oxford Auto Salvage, and all of our generous individual donors, I want to thank you for joining us once again. This is episode seven of the Vintage Roundtable, and uh, got an interesting group here. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce you to my co-host, as always, Pete Silva. Pete, welcome back. Uh, did you miss me on the last one? A little bit. <laughs> we had a good time, though. Ken's always a great guy to talk to, and Ken, I mean, uh, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very articulate and has great information. But we got a great group of guys here today. Our first drag race show. Yeah, we kind of joked instead of a round table, we should have had a long straight That's table. right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got three guys, sort of two different generations that I think are the epitome of what drag racing is about in Maine. Started on the ground floor when it was rough and tumble. And I think they've helped to elevate it to where it is now in its popularity. And they've had success at local levels, regional levels, and actually national levels. So this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to hearing their stories. Yeah, so let's uh, go around the table and introduce the guys. First of all, uh, off here to your right, we have a uh, member of the Maine Motorsports Hall of Fame class of 2019, Mr. Lomer Pelletier. Lomer, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, next to him, we have uh, one of the newest inductees going into the Maine Motorsports Hall of Fame this October, Mr. Carl Crowley. Welcome, Carl. Thank you very much. Honored to be here. Yeah, and another gentleman joining you in this year's class, uh, class of 2023, we want to welcome Steve Klukey. Thank you very much. Great to be here. S S Steve's got kind of a horse throw, but he was gracious enough to uh, soldier on through with us, so we're appreciative of that. Thanks. Absolutely. So, let, as I usually like to <clears throat> dig into these programs, uh, go right back from the start. What put a steering wheel in your hands, uh, Lomer? Well, I started, actually, I started circle racing at Unity, and uh, every time I'd go home, I'd have to work all day, all week on the car, <laughs> so I figured there was a better, better thing to do, so I started drag racing on the street, so then they opened up Norwich Walk Airport, and uh, I think it's 58 or 59, and I started drag racing. I took one of my forges I was making a stock car out of and made it a drag car. So that's what started me. And I remember that guy. I'll tell you about it later. I've okay. got a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carl, how about yourself? What put a steering wheel in your hands? Uh, salt box and Debbie. Really? Yeah. Back in the 50s. Wow. Three years. And my hobby was <laughs> hot rods. Built a, a, a 32 Ford pickup, put an Oldsmobile in it, and I got it on the road, and that's where I started with that. I had a uh, GMC pickup, and in 1959, went to Sanford and raced it at Sanford. The funny part of it was I could have got out of the car and gone faster. <laughs> 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 but that's where it all started with me. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, how great. about yourself? Well, my brother always used to, um, well, he stock car raced at first. Then he started going to Norwich Walk to watch the races, but never took me. But he used to come home and talk about long skinny cars called uh, slingshots and things like that. Boy, I was so interested in it. And I, boy, I'd really like to do that. So I never really had a drag car until a few years later after Vietnam, I ordered a car called, well, rode home to my father and told him what I wanted. And, but they, um, originally I wanted like a Hemi Roadrunner or, or a four-speed uh, um, uh, Hemi Cooter yeah. or, or something. Yeah, we all want but, one of those. <laughs> yeah, but there was so much money, there were $4,400. Yeah. Who could afford that? So <laughs> I saw a, a dozen for base price, 2750 bucks. I had all the options in it and paid 3150 and I, when I came home, the car had already been delivered on a Saturday, so I couldn't get it until Monday morning. Monday morning I picked it up, Sunday I, I raced it for wow. the first time, so I'm the real guy who bought it on Monday and raced on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. He, nice. Didn't, he didn't want to go fast. He didn't want a Chevy, so he bought a Dodge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, had to ease him into it. Huh? Uh, good. Uh, so that's what, and then I just 
fell in love with it because I said, boy, I get a captured audience in here. Everybody's looking at me and growing up and I never really paid any attention. To yeah, now, now being, as Pete said, a generation behind these guys, did you follow drag racing around this area? Did you ever watch oh, yeah. get a chance oh, yeah, to see yeah. these guys race? Yeah, we used to go to Oxford and watch Loma all the time. Yeah. So uh, I don't really remember. Cut has been so long ago, I don't remember a lot. I don't remember, did I ever race with you? or? Oh, yeah. Well, I got a good story for you. <laughs> oh, I got a real good story for you. We, uh, we were down to Penfield. This would be probably 80, 89, 90, 91. We were racing Penfield. And you and I went right down to the, the finals, uh, the top eliminator. I don't remember. You had the Datsun, you had the Datsun it, then? I did, yeah. Yeah, you had the and, Datsun. Uh, so, we went out, and uh, no, no. Before we went out, why Steve came along to me. And he says, "Butch, they're not hooking worth a damn," and we were running on ramp, raw pavement, you know. Yeah. And Steve says, "Geez, we're not hooking good." And he looked at me and he says, "Why am I talking to you? Because that thing you got will hook in a cornfield." <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what happened last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you went that, out on that race and missed the shift. Oh, really? Yeah. That sounds missed difficult. Second, missed See, second gear. That's why you don't remember it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you don't want to forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, think yeah. the, I think the payout on that was $700. Yeah. Like Big money. Yeah. I it raced was, for years for a trophy. Yeah. They yeah. used to pay me. To and we used to fight yeah. over it. Yeah. Yeah. They still do. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> that must have been a pretty fast car. A, 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 two four, a, two, a Datsun 240Z with a big block Chevy in it. That must have, uh, horsepower to weight ratio must have been pretty slick. What'd in the uh, uh, eighth yeah. mile, we, you could tickle 590s in the quarter tickle. mile. Jesus, that's quick. Yeah, yeah and that was... Yeah. Well, we go to Winterport, and that's what you're seeing in the eighth mile. Yeah. 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 I, brought, wow. I brought some pictures of that. Yeah, nice. I, see, you see the picture, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a reminder of that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, so, Pete, dig into this stuff. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to start with Loma. He's the oldest spokesman of the group. And before I start, we've got tremendous family history. Um, my father and him were great friends, best friends for... I'm 75 and it's forever since I can remember. He's been a family friend for that long and these two guys will know, understand what I'm saying next. We've cussed each other out for 60 plus years and we're still friends. You guys must know what I'm talking about a little bit here, don't you? You can say yes if you want to. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've been thrown into the shop at least yeah. once. Uh, yeah. But anyways, going back to your starting point, and some of it I know, and some of it I don't really know because there's yeah. gaps. And you started in 1953. You go to Unity Raceway. You're sitting in the bleachers or something like that, and they have a race your neighbor. Yeah, I brought my brother and his girlfriend at the time because it turned out to be his wife. But I had a 36 Chevy Coupe, and uh, they say anybody wants to run your neighbor, just come on out. Well, I told my brother because that was our ride home. You know, I told my brother, I says I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> So next thing he next thing he sees me, I'm out in the track, 36 Chevy Coupe. Well, luckily I won, but when I got home, I had to put two fenders, two fenders and a bumper in the front. <laughs> yeah. But we did drive it home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so your next move is the 48 Ford Coupe with the Mercury motor. Right? Yeah, the yeah, you, stroker motor. Yeah. You won a race with it, then you sold it to Buddy War, and he yeah. had tremendous success with I it. I think he won 17 features yeah. with that car. Yeah. So. I have a little gap from there because, you, you know, my next recollection, now we're into the mid-50s or maybe a little later. Yeah. My next recollection is, some ways you go from that, you just explained some of it to drag racing. Well, no, <clears> I went, I drove, I built a 55 Chevy two-door, six-owner, but they made us go backwards. Okay. I ran 538s in the rear, six-owner, yeah. six-owner class, and they made us go backwards for the first lap. I remember so I they used to do that. So yes, yeah, people yeah. cheating. So I said, so I, oh, yeah, yeah five thirty-eights in the rear, a six-owner. I said, it ain't for me. So yeah. I turned around, and I loaded up, went home. He, Lomar actually drove for me. Yeah, I drove fifteen. I was too young to drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah a couple of young fellows. They were fifteen yeah. years yeah. old. <laughs> Daryl Prescott. Ah, uh, uh, that was myself and uh, 
you, did you drive the 55 Chevy or the Mercury? The Mercury. Yeah. What a tank. Uh, my, <laughs> myself and Eddie Gurney. Yeah. Yeah. Girlfriends yeah. brought us the They car. were too young. They couldn't drive yeah. it. So. Parents wouldn't sign for us. Yeah. But you never really got hooked on circle racing? No. I never it, really no. did much for you? No. But he stayed connected, and we'll get to that in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Big yeah. time. I mean, it, it, uh, so I remember the next thing I really remember is being a young teenager. You have the 48 sedan with the 389 Pontiac yeah. in it. And this must be when you came into the picture. You were already there, I guess. You yeah. picked us up every Sunday. Myself, Clarence McLean, and sometimes David Prescott. And I, yeah. David's not with us, but I know Clarence remembers oh, it. Oh, yeah. And you took us every weekend as little kids <clears throat> to Norridgewalk. And it couldn't have been any cooler. We grew up, all of us, in an era, even though you're younger. America was really a version of American graffiti. Yeah. It, it was a car nation, yeah. hot rods and, and whatever. So it was big for us to go to the drag strip with a guy that was actually racing and competing. Yeah. And then I, from there, I remember a lot of 55 Chevys with the 301s, 327s, yeah. and I two four barrels. Those, yeah. But the gap from uh, the last circle track deal to us going with you, you just explained some of it. You and Kyle were racing at Norwich Walk in the yeah. 50s. Now, you talked about, somebody mentioned about on the dirt. Were you actually drag racing on the dirt? Oh, no, we used up the side streets. But I mean, okay, so there was no real drag strip no, in no, the no, beginning. It was, it was the the F yeah, I know there was a lot of street racing going on. Everybody yeah, was doing yeah. that. Yeah, that was the airfields. Yeah, North okay. Rock and Sanford. Yeah. And Kyle, you explained some of your deal. I was looking at this and I was saying, how does a guy gets out of high school, he works for the Pontiac garage in Ellsworth, the Chevrolet garage in Ellsworth, and then the next thing I know, he's got a lake and sea marina. Mm-hmm. So how did you go from the car deal to the marina deal? I worked uh, at uh, Morrison Chevrolet in Mo Ellsworth. I was Morrison, past, past yes. Man. And uh, I met Bud Morrison and I grew up together. Matter of fact, we have a birthday together. And uh, old buddies, whole street races and stuff. I worked at the Pontiac garage at the time and, and uh, Bud said anytime you want a job, his, the, the Morrison Chevrolet's parts manager was ready to retire. And he says, uh, I can use you. So I thought about it. I picked the phone up and said, what time do you want me to start? So right. I worked for there for uh, about, 12, about 12 years. And then I got looking. I just got tired of answering the phone, number one. And I just said, I got, I got to do something different. So what I did was uh, I started a speed shop on Route 1 in Hancock. And that would be the very first speed shop east of Bangor, anywhere. What and was I, the name of that? Uh, I used to work that evenings and Saturdays, but still worked. Did you have a name for it? or was yeah, it just Crowley Engineering. It was Crowley Engineering. And uh, did very well with it. And then uh, after a fashion, I got burned out working six and a half days a week. and. Well, sometimes six. But so I said, I got to go do something else. So I got thinking about it and I said, well, I, my uh, family had a, uh, has a cottage on uh, Molasses Pond, which is north of Ellsworth. And I got into boats and stuff. And then that grew and I said, I, the marina that was there, the boat dealer that was there, uh, was selling out. So I had a co-partner and we bought him out and moved it into downtown Ellsworth. Wow. At the Agway building, right at the section like McDonald's in there. And uh, we worked that for five, I think five years. And everybody that I know of in history now with me, me tells that sometimes that co-ownership doesn't work. Well, it took four or five years and it really didn't work. So I said to heck with it. And uh, I was well into Mercury Marine for the outboards and stern drives. So I told them I was going on my own. I bought some land and started Lake and Sea Marine. And uh, that there, went from North Ellsworth to a shop 
in North, North East Harbour on Mount Desert Island. And I worked between the two. I obviously had pit workers in Ellsworth and then down in uh, North East Harbour. And uh, worked that until 19, I think it was 1990. And uh, so I had hired a fellow that used to be an old dry greaser, Boston Strangler. Yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. yeah. He was a crew chief. Yeah. And got out of, he was living in Massachusetts. He wanted to come to Maine. So he came to Maine, and somebody I knew on Mount Set Island was something, asked him what he was going to do. Well, he, mechanic, he liked, to, he liked to do the mechanic part of it. And they said, well, I know somebody who's looking for a mechanic, but I, do you know anything about the outboards? And he said, no, but I can learn. And he came to me, I hired him, and he was excellent. And uh, so that went on. And then after a fashion, my wife and I, uh, we had a, a variety store and gas it's station. A little bit of everything. <laughs> down in Northeast Harbor. And she ran the variety store. And I sold Lake and Sea Marine, which is now Lake and Sea Boat Works in Bar Harbor. And uh, still going, still the same guy. Wow. Very successful. That's impressive. Yeah. So, at what time do you transform sort of from the boat deal to when you run into Loma and go drag racing? Were you already doing that? Oh, yeah. So that yeah. was already going on oh, at the yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, already going on. Okay. So I sold the boat business to the fellow that I hired. And um, I was sitting at the lunch counter, the variety store one day, and a good friend of mine came in, sat down and told now that you don't work, you don't have the boat business, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm too young to not do something. I said, i got to find something to do. And she says, uh, you interested in a, uh, a state manager job? And I said, well, I'd love to do that. <laughs> said, yeah, that would be wonderful. So she says, because uh, she worked for him. So she went back to the, the uh, state and said, I think I found you a caretaker. Oh, send him right out. Well, I started the next day. Wow. And that owner of that, I worked for for them 12 years. And if you watch Laura Noda, created by Dick Wolf, yeah. that's my boss. I'm real. What, yeah. that's uh, that's what, cool. what was the first guy you drove? Was that the Pontiac when I met you at uh, Norwich Walk? At Norwich Walk was the Pontiac. Yeah, yeah. and Cappy Holt. Uh, yeah, uh, and Cappy. Yeah, 60, yeah, the 61. Uh, 61. The, the, my Pontiac was a 61. Yeah, it can't be yeah. Got that right 61, 61 yeah. bubble top, 389, three speed, four barrel. Yeah. And it was in the 390 year. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's, that's when I was driving the 48 Ford Ford. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Be modified. Yeah. So, Steve, I don't think a lot of people realize you did two tours of Vietnam. Yeah. So, I think a lot of people would thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and obviously, you just explained the whole thing about ordering the the Duster four speed three forty Duster. But I want to go back to, uh, and I don't even know how to pronounce it. First car, I don't know if it was your mother's car or what. A sixty four Mercury. Kelly. Kelly Ante. Yeah. What the oh, hell yeah, is that? A Canadian <laughs> car? Yeah, well, no, I don't no. know. It was at the Chrysler dealership. <laughs> no, no, was a, it was a Mercury like a Falcon. Okay, is it a Canadian car? Like no, 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 no. Is it? No, it's an American car. No, yeah. I mean, I never heard of it that either. Was a, but it was that was a model. Bucks. That was a model. <laughs> they wanted it to sound European. <laughs> yeah. And it had a four speed. No way. Bucket seats, three hundred or three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that's what made it to Caliente. It was oh, this, really? Yeah. Okay. It was like so, buying an XLT Ford. You know, sick. They came. XLT came with the bucket seats and the four yeah. gear. You know. Nice looking that, car. Yeah. I mean, I like the looks of it. Yeah. So what are you now, in your 20s? I mean, you get out of high school, you're 18, you do two tours, so you got to be yeah, in, your, I was, um, in your 20s. 21. I was 21 when I got out. And I, I had my car for a year back home, you know, so I would come home and drive it for a little bit, but... The Mercury? No, the Mercury was long gone. In, you were still in the service when you came home and picked up the Duster? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because I was in the service and... Um, now I'm in 69 to 71, yeah. part of 69, all of 70, part of 71. 
Um, I already had the car. So were you, were you changing it much then or just running it and breaking it and fixing it? No, I'm just running it a little bit. You know, I, I race, but not um, seriously or anything. I can only go a couple times a year based on, you know, being in the service yeah. and everything. Did you, oh. did you cross paths with these well, Kyle yeah, and Loma these back were, then? Right? I mean, yeah. Every time you go to the track, you'll see one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. So, well, I, you know, I, I, obviously that's not a surprise because when Loma started racing, my dad was just up the road from his shop and he had the two Camaros and they were gone every weekend starting yeah. Friday, really. Yeah. Probably some days before, so we were some track yeah. all the time. Yeah. I don't know how long I had the... Uh, Mercury. Yeah. Did you well, do it wasn't that long, but it was 350 bucks. <laughs> yeah. So what was that, like your first car to bang around in or no, something? No, I had other cars, but none of them ran. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was probably economical. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Especially when you don't know how to fix them. They yeah. just stayed in yeah. and looked at them. <laughs> so this car revolved, obviously. I'm going to jump around. I know, yeah. you know, you started with a 340. And then you got a whole deal here as it goes 340, 377, 383. 416, 440. What took so long to get to the last one? Or is it just as society moves along, the motors become available and money? Money. Yeah, well. Yeah. Everything yeah. costs money. Mm -hmm. and yeah. The faster you want to go, the more money it's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. if you're really serious yeah. about it. Because I mm -hmm. realized you can't just put anything in it because it's going to break just like it did the last time. Yeah. So you're going to come up with something form. better. And that's how it falls from that. Yeah. And Jesus, I like to go racing. a little fast, so you yeah. have more yeah. cubic inches. Yeah. To well, do over again, you'd have the biggest damn motor you could get in it. You yeah. well, whose motor did you buy? Uh, Herod McCandless or something? No, I built them. You built them all? Yeah. yeah. When you well, I would go and have machinists do yeah, it. I was yeah, I know say a machine that. job. Yeah. Now you, you, you had the record holder with that, right? Yeah, I don't remember what year it's on there. Yeah. But well, it's 91, 92, I, International Hot Rod Association, National. Right. Season low ET and start speed in class 92, 10.11, 132.88. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of ran. Yeah. yeah. The thing that is. Was, um, that was fun too because they told me, they said, okay, it's going to be record run. So you have to have two runs within 1%. Yeah. I made the, the run and it was a record. So I came back and all these guys are from the South, and because that's a good friend of mine down there, it's Herb McCandless that was one of my sponsors. And the, the second time I went down, I come back. Oh boy, I got the run. I got it. I, I got the record and everything. They said, "No, that was a time trial. Like, we don't have a record. Oh, we have no. a record the next uh, run." So I was all excited over nothing. So when I told the guy at the ticket booth, I says, "Yeah, I thought that was going to be a record." And uh, he goes, "Why?" And I says, "Well, he, I guess it's just a time trial." He goes, "No." Yeah, he says, he goes, you know Herb McKeelis, that's my next door neighbor. I says, no kidding. He goes, yeah, you just got the record. Congratulations. <laughs> so is that, is that, is that the guy that had an affiliation with Sox and Martin? Yes, he raced, he drove for Sox and Martin. Okay, so that must have been a, a hell of a technical alliance for you as far as getting information you may yeah. not have brought around <laughs> yeah. locally. I would think that must have progressed oh, you. Oh, we still yeah. exchange Christmas cards yeah. every year. But that must have progressed you quicker than you would have if you'd have just been here racing on I your own. I was on the phone with him a lot. Yeah. We, we lined up the car based on how they did it back then for the perfect alignment and you jack up the car and you wouldn't get any tow in and tow out and all that. I was sitting in the car I on the alignment stand with a, my phone Talking to Herb McGinnis on how to do it. I, I try to this day. I try, you know, I talk to Bobby Eastman a lot. I'll go down there and have a coffee with him <laughs> yeah. and Dick. And I've tried to tell him that on his car about the weight of the driver's seat with yeah. a four link. Yeah. I says you need to put. I, I, I got him to put his car up on elephant stands or scales, and I said put your weight in the, you know, put a degree finder on everything. Yeah. Put your weight in the seat. And then go back and do it yeah. again, and he, it blew his mind about how it changed the toe of the rear end. Since then, I have well, bought my own scales. I can yeah. scale my own car now, and, but and I can't see, line it up. The thing, I can with, scale the thing it. with him when he was driving that Mopar, it was like Nason having a petty car. Yeah. You got all the information. Good point. You know. Mm. Good point. If people want to go yeah. with a sock guy, that's that's how you compare the two. Yeah. You know. His birthday's coming right up in August. The eighty years old. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. I'm gonna get back to Lomer here. And so you're moving along with the the sedan with the big motor in it. Yeah. 
And like I said, I remember the 55 Chevys with the 301s and the 327s. Was that your next version of a drag car? No, those were Camaro? my street race cars, if you okay, remember, I remember right. Those that. are my street yeah. race cars. What I did then is I built a 40, uh, 58 Corvette and went epping with it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, red with the white stripes set. Yeah. When I had the Jenny station, I built that 58 and I, okay. I raced that at Sanford. I raced wow. it at New England. And I, my tow car was a 59 Pontiac Catalina four door standard shift. Perfect. And I ran that in E stock. <laughs> that was my tow car. So if I broke my tow car, yeah. I couldn't tow my, yeah. my race car back. The ride right home would have been loud. Yeah. <laughs> what, what car yeah. was it? Do you have two different heads on a big block Chevy? That was the Tweety Bird. That was yeah. a Pontiac. Was? Pontiac. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was the Camaro. Yeah, because well, I put it in the Camaro, but it first was in Tweety. But you sold the Camaro yeah. with that motor. Yes, I did. Okay, I, and the people who bought it oh. sold their house and lived in a tent yeah. to buy that car. Wow, hey, I was winning. That's no uh, good. I was winning every week with the car, and the guy was eating beans. His wife comes over to me and she says, "Will you please let him win once so we can eat something beside beans?" And I said, "Look, I'll say it. I'll say because he says you got all kinds of money. You got that big motor." And I said, it's a junk motor. I call them grenade motors. Well, you know, you oh, saw yeah. me when I, I build them. I take a bunch of pistons. Oh, yeah, and stuff. I yeah. Pick a sure. Here and sure. Well, anyhow, I had that motor in there, and he, I won that day. And he says, I said, you want to buy that motor? I said, I'll sell it to you 500 bucks. He says, you shit me. He said, you're going to go home and pull some, give me some old junk motor. I says, look, why don't you come over to my house? I said, come to my house. Follow me home type Follow? deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, he came next day. <laughs> yep. And he brought a tent, like you said. He's he tent outside in the yard. We pulled the motor out. Then he puts it in the following week. He puts it in his Camaro, and he goes out and he blasts two two runs and blew it all to hell. Oh. So then, <laughs> the following week, he sees me at the track. He says, "You know something? You never lied to me." He says that motor had two different heads yeah. on it and two welded pistons. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah, I wow. remember you. you. Just pile the stuff up in the. Yeah. Well, the well, everybody by the time I, had I saw, motors. Yeah. I had junk. Yeah, by the time I saw that stuff, yeah, you were up on KMD. Yeah. And you had boxes of used stuff, and you build a motor. Yeah, yeah. And it, there was one time in Oxford that he was racing another guy in the same class, and he kept beating him. So when they pulled up to the line, it's they so jumped out, switched cars, and raced, and Lola beat him. Was that David Barry? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That was good. That was a good time. That's so, when they had pack houses. With, oh yeah, yeah, it was unbelievable. People were screaming, hollering, oh, oh my God! They thought we was fighting because I jumped in this guy. <laughs> well, I thought I've, you was fighting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One thing I've always wanted to ask you guys uh, as drag racers is which, which do you get more of a thrill from? Is it just pure driving fast, or is it building? something that'll drive fast which gives you there's more no pleasure. feeling like getting up to the line and you, you pre-stage your car yeah and you're sitting there that's the biggest well, soul of all don't you agree Steve? well yeah I enjoy building it too oh yeah I mean, we I, all, all I want it. every year yeah. is geez, I'd like to well, get we all built our own stuff that's yeah. the thing we didn't you know we built <laughs> well, all, uh, all of you yes and, and I actually wanted to follow that up with one more question leading up to what you just said for somebody that hasn't done it, I, I've done a you know, little street racing myself, but when you're in a, in a national event like that, what's the sensation of the launch? Like oh. you said, the anticipation of staging and then... Beating that guy that's good that's next to you. Yeah. <laughs> when these guys started, Ken, they physically had to drive the car and shift it. Yeah. yeah. And I remember when we went up to, we brought the trailer up to... Uh, when a poor Loma took me for a ride in the Camaro. Yeah. And, 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 and I can remember what he said to me, because all the times I was around Loma, he always had a four speed. And I think it says here he had a four speed up until 2016 or something. Yeah. Yeah. By now, right, everybody's Kevin. running automatic yeah. stuff. You just hit it and it goes. And yeah. I remember he said that to me when I was sitting in the car. And the car just does a lot of it. Once you get going, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so not The system like, does a it's lot. It's not fun like it is with a four speed. Yeah. yeah. I used to put a $100 bill on my dash, and if you could take it, between my shifts, you could keep it. I I've never heard lost that story. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, uh, just again, just that sensation. Sorry, yeah. to just no, no, the sensation going. of keep the launch. Yeah. You know, well, I get a, how's it feel? Well, I got a computer in mind. Come to find out, I mean, it tells you what the G force is and everything, and the best ever is three Gs. That's a lot. Up. I was surprised. I don't know. Maybe the That's thing's a lot, broke. Three Gs. Well, I don't know. When I ran pro stock, when I ran the circuit, and I ran all over, ran with NAS with. Uh, uh, yeah, Dino Don and Gartlitz and all them guys, we had to get a physical like an airplane. 
because the Jews. Yeah, they yeah. physical. Yeah. yeah, we used to have to get, take a physical. They just stopped that a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've heard mm -hmm. one general comparison is I've always heard in a in a top fuel dragster the launch oh in a dragster God, yeah. is I more than that. what a, yeah. a jet fighter yeah. taking yeah. off an aircraft carrier. In is. fact, uh, the uh, the car is now faster than a jet taking off. Yeah. yeah. They talk about the, the gel or the fluid that surrounds your brain. Yeah. It actually moves it on, on the drags. It probably mm -hmm. does on a lot of them now, but yeah. the dragsters in particular, I yeah. think it well, moves Well, they're so it. fast now, they had to shorten the track. Right. And I'm not yeah. kidding you. Yeah. They yeah. went yeah. from 1320 to 1,000 feet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're still pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say 200 and... Oh, 335 miles an hour. She set yeah. the record up just to last, last week, week, in, week 337. Yeah. That's what it was. I saw yeah. it. Yeah. 337. Can you imagine? It's crazy. They keep a real good watch, uh, the physical end of it, on those top fuel dragsters and funny cars. What happens is the launch right. and the eyes yep. go to the back, and then the parachutes comes up and it goes yeah, right. That's the worst part. The slowing and the down is yeah, the worst cannot part. do that. Yeah. They've tried to drive those, and they can't yeah. do it. So I watch them on the national events on TV. And think, I don't know how they do it, but they say it. You're, you're doing this. Your eyes are doing this the whole yeah. way because it's just so damn fast. I don't know how you steer them or anything. Right. But that would make sense, though, with all I wouldn't even force. want to try it, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Quarter mile, what did you turn? 140, 135? When? When you run quarter mile. Now? It went the last time you ran. Well, last time I ran on 156.6. 156. A fast I got you here in 2023 at 849 at 159. 158. Okay, well, they no, must, have, must have rounded it off. Yeah. But I, I noticed when I saw all these highlights, and I was going to ask you a question, but I'll finish this one. All these numbers, when Ken gave them to me, I thought they were wins or something, but it's, it, it's how you personally kept adding, making the motor bigger. Right, I just want to and be... I, so, I mean, the, the um, so in, horsepower aspect of it, that's what I was super interested in. So in 75, you win the new, new heavy eliminator class at Oxford at a 1231. No, you won that. Then at 1231 ET at Winterport. And then in 78 is 1159 at 11688 in a quarter mile, 70. Yeah, this is because I'm working on the engine yeah. well, every but, single year. But the progress is, progression is amazing. In 82, it's a 1071 at one. 26, and then the national deal at one at uh, 132, and then 210 you're yeah. a 930 at 145, and then 23 at uh, the 158 and 159. That's yeah. so. Back to what Loma says, yeah. the money deal, and you kept putting it in the motor, and I mean I could I, be retired now. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think there's a lot of people in racing that feel that way. Yeah. But, <laughs> you're right. But, and, so, Kyle, when you buy the Pontiac, did you buy it to drag race it? Mm, to, it was, my, was that the family car? Yeah, it was my daily driver. <laughs> I wasn't married at the time. But I uh, bought the Pontiac at uh, a Chrysler Chevrolet dealer, a Chrysler Dodge dealer in Ellsworth. And it come from Millinocket as 61 Bonneville bubble top. Nice all cars, leather. cool cars. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, those nice and cars for drag racing, yeah. An old lady owned it. That was always a drag racing That's, story, the yeah. little old lady, wasn't it? So I happened to be First off, what future. are you calling old? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I was at the dealership, by coincidence, when she came down and traded. Like I said, she come from Millinocket, and she bought a new Chrysler, 300. And that's sitting there, and my, my, I was drooling. Oh, you know, and look in it, and it was a three speed, 389. Uh, I stock. I stock. Yeah. And uh, I put a set of uh, headers on it, put a 390 gear under it, and went to Sanford and raced it at Sanford numerous times. I even broke an axle in a Pontiac. Did you really? At Sanford. Yeah. I got to work Monday morning. <laughs> so, so you guys Whoa. keep talking about Cappy Holt and I stock and yeah. H stock. So yeah. I don't understand H stock and I stock swap classes with Cappy Holt. When we go from Ellsworth to Sanford, we both run I stock. So what we do is we get to Sanford, flip a coin. 
who's going to run I stock or who's going to run H stock. So you wouldn't race against each right. other. Yeah. Because we yeah. didn't want to go now, whatever that is, 200 odd miles, and Conrad, race each other because we're doing that yeah. on the Bucksport Road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did Conrad drive with the tripod? The 60 Six, It was a 60. Conrad. Yeah, yeah. It was did he a run stock? Uh, no, no, he was. Uh, that thing, I can't remember what it was. It was a bigger motor, not 30. It was a 389, but yeah. 335. He got married at Nardwa. Yeah. Do you remember what Race was on the side of the car? Yeah, just married. Yeah, uh, just married today. Yeah. She got me today, I'll yeah. get her tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Pontiac, <laughs> was, Pontiac was a big thing back then. We raced Pontiacs. I'll tell you what, they were hot. Oh, yeah, Dave Berry built everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boy. So, so going back to Lomer and the circle track racing and drag racing, at one time I think he had sponsored something like 17 different circle track racers. And seven of them are in the main Hall of Fame deal now. There's my father and I, Stan Mazzaro, Alba Robinson, Bob Halley, Jimmy Burns, and Bush Burgess. So he stayed pretty connected. Yeah. In the 80s when I was in the Carolinas, he'd come back from Florida with Rose, and that's where I met Danny. He'd stop every fall or every spring coming back yeah. and spend that trip with us. And if we went to Oxford or he hauled Stan forever through Canada or in that. So we never right. left the sport. Canada. He just, yeah. it Canada wasn't Mount. his sport as far as driving. He went off to drag race. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little story and Lomo will probably debate this. <laughs> did you know I drag race? You did. Yeah. Yeah, I went one time. Kyle, when Kyle and him had Winterport open, I raced the last race of the year. I won the class and top eliminator of the day. Wow. Congratulations. I, I'm yeah. still waiting for the owner to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him what it was with. <laughs> See, and I tell you, just to give you a hint, something on his resume says something about race triumph motorcycles. So I was <laughs> racing a triumph gotcha. that day. Yeah. If you want to know who that guy is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the deal is he did something for me a few years later, and I think, and he'll probably debate this story too. Oh, but here we go. It, it, no, it's. Oh. It, uh, it helped me out, but I think he thought that was pay. I had this Nova race car, and uh, I raced it for a while and picked out the Budweiser sponsorship, and uh, it had a dented up roof on it, probably somebody had given me the body and mold it over, so Lomo was gracious enough to, to give me a roof for that Nova. Nice. I think I better tell you this story. <laughs> <laughs> We're at Paul Harvey's going to tell us the rest yeah, of the story. I, 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 we're, we're at George's, his father's shop. <laughs> that was a local gathering because Peter was a hero. Oh, and geez. he needed a roof for 70 Nova. So, of course, we're all drinking, raise hell. So I told Peter, I said, Peter, I got a roof. I said, go down the garage out back. There's a 70 Nova. I said, cut it off now. So, well, they went down, cut the roof off and put it on the car. Monday morning, I drove in my yard. Here's a 72 Nova sitting in the front row under a light with a roof gone. <laughs> we, we had Budweiser for a sponsor, so there was probably some, <laughs> yeah. some hazy moments. But that old, that old Budweiser Nova looked good with that new roof. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know why they took it off that car? Because it was under the light. They could see the cut it up. <laughs> yeah. 70, 72, who's going to care? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we have had a lot of history. Yeah. <laughs> now, how far away from Maine have you guys gotten to oh, race? I was good yeah. question. I was going to get to that. Oh, but no, go. let them ex just to answer your question. They have raced. Let me see. We got Epping. We got Oxford, Winterport, Lebanon Valley, English Town, yeah. Atco, Senea, Penfield, Marachi, something. Marachi. Yeah. Something Quebec. Something in Pennsylvania. They all did this. I mean, yeah. they all, yeah. um, he might have moved around a little more, but all three of these guys. Yeah. Well, That's what I enjoyed the most, is yeah. seeing different cars, yeah. different people, different yeah. tracks. They've all, because you were too young to do Sanford and Norris Walk. Right. I was going to ask about Sanford. I've heard some stories yeah. about Sanford being a pretty dangerous track. I know it was built on an airfield. Well, but it was built on an airfield, but that's when, they, well, that's when you really... Uh, the big boys would show up. They'd come. They'd come. From that all turned over. into Epping, New Hampshire. Those, those are the yeah. same people. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Oh yeah. And so turn, speaking of the big guys, you two both ran Grumpy Jenkins. Oh, I ran him. Yeah. I, yeah. I won that Senea. Yeah. 
And what do He's you? He's been in auction I run, before. I remember when he went yeah, to auction. I run Dino Dawn at auction. Yeah, pretty big name. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't know that. Yeah, what, when they were at Sanford, I think Godless was coming up, and all oh, those guys yeah, back yeah. then. Too. Sanford, I mean, um, Godless was at Oxford before, yeah. and they made a commercial out of it. I remember I was standing on the gate, on the fence, in the commercial when he goes by, oh, and he really? says, "There's yeah. a winning smile for you," because he's <laughs> if, selling Wind's friction proof. Right. Yeah. If you go to Godless Museum and you tell him you're from Maine, he'll come out and talk to you. Yeah. Oh, hmm. there's, there's people yeah. from Maine that were running his restoration yeah. stuff there. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, working right there. From yeah. up on our, I was there, but I never talked to him, but I saw him walk in, and I said, yeah. hey, I'd like to have him sign my shirt. And he said, well, he's in a bad He spent a lot of time around <laughs> okay. there. Yeah. I, I lived like 45 minutes from there, and he had a lot of car shows, old shows. Oh, yeah. Still yeah. does. And he had an old barn there with all the old parts in it. And oh, he'd yeah. set up a table there and sell those parts that came off the if they blew up or something, mm -hmm. and he'd autograph everything in his books and yeah. his hats. He's I've been to that. that yeah. What a great museum that is. So let me ask you a question. Racing at Epping between 12-hour shifts. <laughs> well, I was on a schedule for 12-hour days. And this is at Sappy. Yes, at three or four up in days Norge, a week. Up in Norgewa. No, in the Scully. Scully. Yeah, well, Scully and yeah, I think they Scully, call it yeah. both. Yeah. Uh, I worked there for 39 and a half years. Well, it's all shift work. Yeah, absolutely. So after a night shift, I would have my, all my stuff in the parking lot, jump in it, and head to um, Epping, New Hampshire, which is like a two and a half, three hour oh, drive. Oh, yeah, from there all day the long. The trucks that I had. Yeah. And um, I would race, but by one or two o'clock, I knew if I was winning or not, doesn't matter. I got to go back to work and work that night. <laughs> so I had to rush and get all my junk back together take off, get back to the mill, and work all that night. Oh, my word. So well, <laughs> I did that really often. I know everybody here has done well, but I think if you race, especially in the early days, you sell your souls. One way or another, you're selling your soul to do it. I can remember <clears throat> when at Unity in the dirt days, you remember the people, they would be in the service, and they'd come home for a uh, weekend. Try to, yeah. try to run... Stevie Levitt used to do it all the time. I remember Vince Thibodeau doing it, getting oh, an yeah. accident and breaking his leg, so that probably didn't yeah. work well, yeah. getting back to boot camp or whatever it was on Monday morning. But yeah. you do make that commitment. You, I tell people, if you've been fortunate enough to have a field victory lane, oh, however yeah. it goes, drag strip or circle track, you're done. Yeah. You're done. You're, you're mentally hooked. done. You're, you're addicted. Yeah. You're yeah. going to do whatever it takes to uh, keep it moving. Well, I used to drag seven kids to the races. Yeah. Yeah, plus a neighborhood. Yeah, You're plus seven the kids, plus yeah. a neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> so you needed that four-door station oh, wagon. Yeah. Nine <laughs> passengers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite car that you have had during your career? 56 Chevy, I built it. Like that. <laughs> uh, <Pete? Yeah. laughs> he, got a, he got a brand new 65 Mustang out of that 56 Chevy. Yeah. Nice. Carl. Okay. 67 Corvette. Yeah. It, it, it's a straight that, action gas. Oh, wow. Is that the one with the yeah. three? It says 302, but was, yeah, it, was that like a DZ302? Uh, yeah, a real Z302. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do I dare say the Duster was your favorite? It might have been, like, yeah. <laughs> it's the only one I ever had. <laughs> That's 53 years. It wasn't years. the Mercury, yeah. right? Wow. No. <laughs> Actually, I'm racing this weekend. Yeah. Wow. Um, Epping? Yeah. Yeah. Well, rain, no rain, rain, no rain. Right yeah. now they're sticking yeah. with no rain for Sunday. So I'm going to try to do that. So, so Carl, the Pontiac, it got sold. You found <coughs> it in a junkyard? The and GTO. The, okay, the G, okay, yeah, I missed Six, that. The 64 GTO. Yeah, 64 GTO, yeah. 389, yeah. tri-power, four-speed. Yeah, I bought it brand new. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I sold it in 69 to a friend. And two weeks later, he goes off the road and cleans off the front bumper and bends that all up and whatever, because they got him for being drunk. So he couldn't pay his fine. He couldn't pay the towing charge on the car. So it ended up at a body shop in Ellsworth. And I then had drag racing, a 57 Chevrolet uh, wagon that was a delivery wagon. Didn't have the rear windows. But uh, sedan delivery. Yeah. yeah, sedan delivery. And the strange part of it is the sedan delivery, it had glass. It didn't have tin. And the back door of the of the car, the whole door went up. And they didn't make many of them. 
And I come yeah, to I find out, I think it, it originally started as a army vehicle. And when I, but I, I was racing that in 64. So the station, the you were racing the station wagon. Hmm? The station wagon you were racing or the GTO? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I run it in modified production. And uh, so I, I sold it and uh, somewhere in between there, probably Kevin can tell me, somewhere in between there I started boat racing. And I had a 18, a 19 foot Hawaiian with a 460 forward in it over transom headers. And I raced that in several different, different uh, areas. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't have anything after I sold that yellow wagon. I started doing the boats. And then middle of, middle of the 80s somewhere, I took my son and we on a Sunday and we went over to Winterport because I hadn't been racing for several years. And we got over there and Jesus, that noise, the smoke, the smell, <laughs> the people. Ah, I got to get back in this. And so I, I bought a uh, uh, 60, a 72 Datsun 240Z. That's the one with the, the big block in it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I bought that, pretty much restored it. And the first day I went back to Winterport with that, uh, I unloaded, went out, made one pass, a little small there, because the motor was, had just been redone. And I made one pass, and she's on the top end. She started laying down. I, what the hell is this all about? Come back, come to find out. I, they, those big blocks, when the machine shop uh, bores them, because it was a 468. And when they bought it, they didn't clean those small oil passages oh, off yeah. the side of it. Yeah. Picked up the guy, yeah. blew them over. Uh, Jesus. Well, that, that was quite disappointing. So I worked Chevrolet at the time. So I said, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Because I had done it with my Corvette. I knew the zone rep very well. And uh, I said, I need a motor. Well, OK. And it's all what I wanted. Uh, original for uh, LS7. Oh, God, yeah. And he said, I can get you one. And he did. Those had to be in the 500 horsepower range from the factory. Right out of there. Yeah. Huh? So I. 454, 450 or horse. Yeah. I had to put the, uh, my intake manifold, carburetor, obviously, back on it, put it back in the Datsun, and went out and run hmm. 620, 61s with, for a crate motor. What we've got to talk about, Kyle, is first one down the drag strip when they opened on the port. That was, first you, guy, yeah, that was you too, I, right? Yeah. I was after him. I was in that same era. But he he went down the track first time. First run ever. First run ever. Oh, what year track. was that? 1967. Yeah. June 4th. And 50 years later, we both have the same cars. He still has the GGO. I still have Tweety Bird, 40 yeah. Pontiac. Yeah. That's, that's what, yeah, I was going to bring that up. The thing that's impressive in, in a throwaway society, so to speak, that all three of you guys have our original cars. Have cars almost a damn half a century. Yeah. We still got the You know, that's I mean, uh, GTO. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just, I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. And you both, I mean, you're, you're not racing anymore, but you still got the car. I don't know if Kevin races it yeah. or plans yeah. on it. But you guys are still running those cars. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, 73 and a two, that's 50 years, and you got to be Tweety Bird knocking the hell out of 60 years. Yeah, I've had Tweety Bird 61 years. Wow. Yeah. I drove it on the street when I first, uh, when yeah, they I remember. very first put the yeah, Pontiac in. I remember. In. Yeah. Built it down to Tukey's Junkyard yeah. down on Drummond yeah. Avenue. Yeah. yeah. While his girlfriend yeah. was reading a book. What's that? While his girlfriend was reading a book. Remember, she used to go yeah. there every night and you worked yeah. on that car, she'd sit there. Yeah, he still does the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, when, when you guys raced, was it primarily just heads up or was it bracket racing or? It was, uh, if you, if you had to run your class. Yeah. So if there was, let's say there was six, seven cars in your class, you had to run off. So if you won that. Was that stock, then, super stock and? All of them. Yeah. yeah. And what you do at the end of the day is you would race the winner of the other classes for the top man. 
Yeah. And you'd have to give them one light, two lights, or three lights, or they'd give you one. Yeah. You had to, you had to spot the guy. Yeah. Because if you if you let's say I was running nine eights back then, I had to run cars that were going eleven something like yeah. that. And one time I had to run a Volkswagen. I gave him two trees, and I beat him at the eyes. Wow. And I mean, when I beat him, it was just. And you really have to concentrate oh, on your side of the you train. Don't even, you don't yeah. even look at that car. That's yeah. got to be a killer to sit there. Oh, it's, you I can't mean, believe. even the short times a lot, leave uh, alone the guy's right almost now, out of sight. You can't believe when you're the, waiting um, them lights are. That's what kind of put racing out of the realm. It, it was uh, too expensive because it was a heads up race. Yeah. This guy got more money than him. He's going to yeah. win. That's yeah. it. But that's that's why they came up with bracket racing. Yeah, but that's racing. And the first time I went to um, Oxford, I asked him about it. I was uh, that my car was too light. And I had a spare tire and everything, and a jack. I put everything. In. Still couldn't make the weight. And they said we have this brand new class. It's called bracket racing. I said, what the hell is that? He said, well, all you got to do is try to run your same time every run. I won the race. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. It's more than stock superstar stuff. So that's basically <laughs> what happens now, actually. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. basically, it's all bracket racing now. I mean, until yeah. a big, big. When we first started in Winterport, uh, we didn't have that tree that Lone was talking about. No. Right. The flag man? Didn't have the yeah. computer. Just a flag man? Like you see yeah, on had a flag man. Like American yeah. graffiti yeah. deal? Yeah. The, what Lone was talking about, given the spots, there used to be yeah. white lines out yeah. there. Yeah. That's yeah. how you yeah. determine oh, yeah. take so off the slower blaster. car. Yeah. We got out on the ahead. So you didn't have a delayed tree. Yeah. 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 Huh. It worked yeah. well. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. of course, that was technology a break, took yeah. over and <clears throat> then come the computer. Because Nars Rock and Sanford, that's where it was until mm -hmm. till Sanford got yeah. the tree. Yeah. At, yeah. at uh, Nars Walk, too, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Have any of you guys been into some really serious wrecks in your career? Not just racing, no. circle racing. Yeah. Not, not drag I, racing. I had Turned sideways a couple of times, but that's it. <laughs> I had an accident at uh, New England with the Datsun and uh, <laughs> come out of the water box, staged, down come the lights and let the buttons go and she went to the air, right to the air. I had wheelie bars on it. You did. Drove the wheelie bars up into the bottom panel of the, of the back of the car <laughs> and broke the rear end housing. Jesus. And when she come down, she come down like that, and I went right straight over into them Jersey barriers. Broke this wrist, and nose, fender obviously, broke the windshield. That's about the one time I've had. Wow. I never wrecked a car, but I blew the rear end before, and all the teeth went right into the gas tank. <laughs> Emptied everything right out of the starting line. <laughs> lucky, it didn't, lucky it didn't burn down. I lost a flywheel out of Tweety. I had, I had a shield on it. But it took the back of the motor and it took out both fenders. David Barry and the Corvette with the injections. I took his windshield out and the injection tubes off. That was the car next year you were yeah, racing. Yeah, we were racing yes. side by side. Wow. Yeah. 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 But that's as I remember that, that car. Now. I remember that now that you mention yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, tell me about hauling used time and equipment from New England. <laughs> Epping. Is that was that yeah. hauling it to Winterport so you'd have something more modern or something? Yeah. So yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, it was, we raced on Sunday, and it was Saturday. We went to New England and bought that time and equipment. After the race? No. We they, had they had updated and you the bought The day before yeah. we opened. Yeah. And we went down and bought and picked up their, all their old time and equipment. Probably it was left over from Norwich Walk. It was. Yeah. Yeah, they used and it at Norwich Walk we and came, Stanford. Yeah. We got that on Saturday afternoon. It came off, and then Sunday set it up. Sunday, early Sunday morning, that was opening day. Boy, that must have been, the people racing there must have really appreciated that. I mean, because oh, yeah. well, you have to learn again the whole yeah. process. But See, New England Speed in Commonwealth, Massachusetts, New yeah. England Speed. I used to buy stuff from that. They're the ones that took, uh, did uh, not, uh, Sanford, and then they went to New England. They, they bought the track. They built the track, mm -hmm. but that was New England Speed. Was it New England Speed? Yeah, that, that was involved in that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I met uh, M and H Tire, Marvin Panch. Yeah, and uh, he was a circle, and big time circle. And he wanted right, to get yeah. into. That's the one thing I really. He wanted to get into drag racing, so he was making drag racing tires. He'd send me two sets every week. Nice. Different 
compounds. Different compounds. Yeah. So I never had to buy a tire yeah. no, back then. Didn't. Yeah, um, you didn't know that, did you? Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I ran M and H tires. Yeah, and I'd have given the results. Yeah. Now that's a. It, I'm sure you'll admit that was a hell of an advantage. Oh my God! Yeah. Fresh tires oh, and yeah. probably the rubber was getting pretty soft every week. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So it never wow. had heat cycles yeah. to get hot. Because I was running Friday nights and I was running Sundays. Yeah, you know, twice a week. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, we're getting uh, we're getting low on yeah. time here. Was there anything else you wanted to to hit on there, Pete? On your well, you get some these guys. You know, they've all hell. They've all did it their way, their own way, and they were everything I thought they were going to be, as far as uh, building the sport. I believe they're foundation builders across the board, and to think that they're all two of them. Well, actually, three of them. The sons got the car, still competing. Yeah. Sixty or seventy years later. <laughs> And doing it, I think they represent the state very well. Yeah. I, and, and Lomer, what about when you went into the Hall of Fame uh, a few years back? Give give these guys a feeling of what it's going to be like in October oh, nice, when they step yeah. up on that stage. Words can't explain it. Yeah. Words can't explain it. You look up and you see all these people and you say, do I deserve this? You know, do I deserve this? It's just humble. It's humbling. Yeah. I, I've known Lomer my whole life, basically. And to see what it means to people, and he just said it, but his tone of voice said more when he said it. I had a five-page, because he told me I had to put, give a speech. I had five yeah. pages. <laughs> I didn't use one page. No, yeah. but, but he walked through the door at Gray. I could see the emotion, him and his daughter, Lori. And it, I think his words to me on the way down, he said, it dawned on me, this is forever. Oh, yeah, it's forever. Nobody can, it, and that applies your to you guys, will, too. Your yeah. grandchildren will know what this that is for, This is forever. Yeah. Didn't happen by accident, by the way. Don't forget, yeah. it didn't happen by accident, and it wasn't like you won a popularity contest. Yeah. You won it on what you did, hard work and commitment. And that's the other thing. These three guys doing what they've done to represent this state that long, I don't think people understand the commitment and the effort it takes and still be enthusiastic about it and family. care about it. Family, which you yeah. get to give up. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Baseball that actually games. brings me into my last question yeah. I usually have good in, in these yeah. shows is your chance to, to give a quick shout out to the people who got you to this point, got you to the Hall of Fame, who were special in your career. So, Steve, I'll start with you. There's no question about it, my best friend, uh, Doug Sawyer, who's here today. Right now, see, now I'm starting to get scratched up. But um, he's helped me tremendously, and there's no way. That says it all right there. Yeah. yeah. That, that shows the commitment and how important and special this yeah. is. Yeah. Carl? Lucky, oh, lucky to have friends like that. Yeah. It, the, the sport in the ultimate, oh, well, 60, 70 years, I've never in the rest of my life come across people that you know, appreciate, and from the soapbox derby right up through of that wonderful people. And like when the, the other four guys, uh, three guys, and we started Winterport, and people started coming to it, and the community that is there, you know, I don't know whether it was Lober or, or Steve, said, yeah, it's family. I've never been involved in anything that, oh yeah, he beat me, well, I don't like him or anything. That no. isn't it. No. Yeah. And it's a family. It's a yeah. uh, fantastic fierce, people. Yeah. Fierce competitors, but uh, you realize right. you're all right. a family. Yeah. 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 Help them I'll tell you what, when that, when, before you go to the line, he's my best friend, he's my best friend. But when I get the line, all right. together different. But if he needed something to make a run against me, I'd give it to him. Yeah, yeah. That's, I had. That's Got any more tires? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know you've done everything your way, and you did it yourself. But there must be people. Yeah, I know you'll probably say family, but oh, rightly yeah. so. But oh, there's yeah. got to be people along the way that stand the, out. The people that work for me. Yeah. yeah. The Peter that the Mark Mansfield has been with me. 50 years. Yeah, I remember from a years. young, young kid. Teenager. My son, Peter. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have raced. Or you wouldn't have been able to race. That's right. Yep. That's exactly right. Oh, yep. good. All the help that I had in my years. 
Yeah. I've got to thank them. Yeah. I think that's a good place to, to yeah. put it. Any parting thoughts, Pete? You guys showed the emotion of the sport right here in the last five minutes, and we appreciate that. And thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and traveling down here. Thank you. I think this is a great show. You did a great job, every one of you. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. Um, so uh, that's, as Pete said, this kind of will wrap things up here for this edition of the Vintage Racers Roundtable. Um, hope you guys get a chance to get over and check uh, some of the previous episodes. You can find them on our website at mainvintagerace.org. There you can also find out information on how you can help support this program because it does take, as these guys said, it does take money. Uh, so we can certainly use your help as well if you're interested in, as a business in supporting this. You can track down the folks here at Lincoln County TV. And we're also looking for individual donors to the program as well. You can do that through mainvintagerace.org. And we have a generous donor that's uh, willing to match your donation to help make this program uh, continue. So I uh, want to thank Larry Seidlinger and the crew here at Lincoln County TV. As always, thank our sponsors, Elevation Station and Oxford Auto Salvage, uh, my co-host Pete and our guest today. Uh, so if you want to find out more, again, about supporting the Maine Vintage Race Car Association and our mission to uh, preserve and present the history of racing in the state of Maine, you just go to mainevintageracer.org and we appreciate your support. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time.